Hi, this is Laura Rogers, and today I'm going to show you some more about the uh, Moss Enterprise Query String URL Filter Web Part in SharePoint. So in my last screencast, I showed you just a, a little bit of basic information, uh, some basic stuff that you can do with the uh, Query String URL Filter. And now I'm going to show you how to kind of ramp it up a little bit and show you more of its potential on your sites. So as you can see right here, I have what's called a project details page. So I have just an example, a project site, and um, this each project can have multiple lists associated with one project. Um, like one project can have multiple tasks, multiple issues, um, a list of different uh, things that happen in its change history, and uh, multiple status reports with one project. But they're all tied back to this one project, and this one project's ID field, which is that default ID field that's built in, is going to be going to match up with what's called a what I've created as a project ID number field in all these matching uh, these lists that uh, that are going to be sort of connected to this project list. So, how did I accomplish this? Well, first of all, let me show you what I've done. I've created this um, on the main side of this project's site. Uh, this detail link that's going to be associated with each project. So it's going to take you to that project details page that I just showed you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create that project details page. Obviously, I've already created it, but I'm going to go through those steps for you. So new ASPX page and then um, attach the master page. I'm going to go in here, go throw a web part zone in real quick. And now this is where I can start inserting all of my web parts. I'm going to save this ASPX page as, um, I call it project details in the final version. I'm going to just call this one two because this is the example that I'm going to use as I go. So now I've saved this project details. Now the key here to be able to create that link to the project details that I showed you on the home page is in a workflow. So let's go create a new workflow. I'm going to call it new project and associate it with that main project list. I want this workflow only to run when a new item is created. Now another thing that I've done is I went into the project list and created a new hyperlink field and called it detail link. So this detail link is a, is a field that, that we're going to place the hyperlink um, into with this workflow. So I'm not going to do any conditions, I'm going to do an action. The first thing I'm going to do is build a dynamic string. So the dyna dynamic string is going to contain the URL to this project details page that I created. So this one that I created. Um, was called project details.aspx. I'll go ahead and um, use the URL to the project details2, which is the brand new that I one that I created. I copy this and use it in my workflow. Now um, here's the query string part. So we're gonna do question mark project equals, and this is where we're gonna use the ID field in the current list. And then the key to make it be able to be a hyperlink and to not have the whole URL show in the field is to comma space here. And the project details is the actual words on the link that they're going to be clicking to go to it. So this is my created the link and then I'm going to call this project details, project details URL. And then the second step is to set a field in the current item and to set that detail link, that hyperlink field, to the value of this workflow item that I've just created, this uh, variable. And that's it. All right, so, and then we're going to use some of these same principles. You're going to go into this project details page that you created. So I've got project details two here and it's just a blank web part page, I'm going to go and add this query string URL filter, but I'm also going to add all those associated lists. So let's see, um, a project list, tasks, status reports, issues, change history, 
they're all associated with that project. The key is that I want to connect this query string URL filter to each of those other uh, web parts, but I have to have this project ID field to be able to connect to um, in each of these web parts. So you can see the change history already has it added by default. I have to go add project ID to all the web parts that don't already have it. Okay, so I've added the project ID field to all the web parts. Now I can create the connection. So I'll start with the first one and just send the values from the query string URL filter and um, down to the the ID field in the project list, but it's the project ID, because that's where it starts, that's where we get that initial number from, but it's going to be the project ID field in all the other lists. And you're probably wondering um, sort of how, what happens behind the scenes to put that project ID field in all the other lists. Well, this is going to, this is not going to be something that I'm, that I'm going to be able to cover in this one screencast. This is going to be uh, things that happen behind the scenes and workflows and things like that. So that it's it, it, it could be a very potentially complex process. You could have your workflows create, you know, tasks as you go through the project. You can have your workflows, um, you know, assign, create items in this change history automatically and things like that. So these are all these are all, are all very complex and those are just another piece of this puzzle. So now you can see that I've created um, these uh, web part connections between that main query string URL filter and all the different lists on here. So now I have my project details two page all put together. Alright, so let's test this project details page and use the query string. Project question mark project equals one. Alright, so I've only got one project in here so far, but you can see that I've got I obviously need to rearrange these web parts so I've got this main project here with the ID 1 and then it filtered the change history issues, status reports and tests. You can see this little filter icon. It filtered them all by project equals 1. So this is the URL that my workflow creates when I create a new project. So the next step is to go through and just create a new project. Now I've got this fancy form. Alright, so I've filled out a new project form and then after that project form has been filled out the workflow runs I get a new project details link automatically created that I have showing as a column here on my default view and also on the main site I go to that project's project details and I get to my details page filtering all the web parts by information associated with that project now obviously since this is a brand new project, I don't see any information in most of the web parts. So I'm going to go ahead and change my filter to show project one information, which is a project that's got several items already created. So now you can see that this web part, I cre web part page that I created showing you from scratch shows all of my web parts filtered by that particular project number. And from this point on, it's just a matter of making it prettier, rearranging things and adding columns that I'd like to see. But um, all in all, it's a pretty good, um, more advanced solution for a query string URL filter, filter web part in Moss Enterprise. Thanks for watching.